Gad, how are you? I'm glad that you're here, Gad. Man, we need you me. today. Let me do, I want to do a live. Please do a live. Instagram. Instagram. Because. Yeah. Are we live? We're, We're live right air, now. Yes, We're on the air. Okay. And on Instagram, on Gad Elmala's Instagram. I love the way you say my name. Is it hey perfect? Guys, we're live on Instagram. No, we're it's live. Gad, not Ged. You said Ged. This is Jim. It's Ged. Bonjour. Hello. <laughs> Bonjour. Jim gets nervous in front of cameras. No, I don't like speaking French. I'm not good at it. Oh. Okay. You could have fooled me with that bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Welcome, Gad. Thank you so much for having me. That's what they say in every show. That's yeah. <laughs> that's that right. is the standard opening. Hey, man, thanks for coming thanks on. For thanks for having, for having me. me. It's and the worst. comedians in America say uh, when they're looking for a joke on stage, uh, it's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff's going on. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's, a, that's a fucking comic going, I don't know what, what else, to say right what now. What else do you want to talk about? Yeah, what else, what else, what else? What else? What else? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny, man, I was just, no, it's not. It's not funny. Come on. Yeah. It's not funny. No. Oh, that's what they say? No, but they'll go, hey, man, you know, it's funny, it's just like one of those lines a guy uses to get into a bit. Oh, that's funny. You know who does, uh, he does a lot of that? Who? Oh. Rich Voss. Every does time he? he's in here, every time you ask him a question, he goes, huh, what's that? But you, he heard you. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, technique it's, we use to think. Right. I don't know. Jer Jerry Jerry Seinfeld says says I'm quoting him like the Dalai Lama now. <laughs> uh, says don't ask don't ask questions to people. Don't ask them any questions. They're to the audience. Here. Yeah. Like don't do. That makes you sense. You guys use you guys use Uber and then you start your bit. That's you know. Right. Why? Yeah, just yeah, do it. Right, you're going to do it anyway, regardless of what they say. Yeah. If they, if they, all say, say, if they say no, oh, okay, I'm not doing the, the bit about Uber. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, He's technically mind, right, because when I was new, my buddy Frank Del Pizzo would always tell me I asked too many questions. Because mm -hmm. it would be nonstop fucking, it's approval seeking. You want that affirmation from the audience. Yeah, and it's a weird nervous thing, and it just becomes a habit even when it's no longer a nervous thing. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So do you guys, like really, who gives a fuck if but they do? But you do it, no? I do do it. I try not to do it as much. Uh, but like you're no... on, on a rehab of, of you're on a program to stop to doing stop it. stop doing it, yeah, because yeah. it's pointless. You're working on it. Yeah. What yeah. about comedians who uh, lean on the brick wall? Like all their, the bodies like on the, on the wall. I've noticed that sometimes like at the comedy cellar and stuff, like they'll put their like hand on the wall or what, like there's, there's just stuff that they need to touch around. Them. Sometimes when you're nervous, you'll do that because you want to brace yourself against something solid. Yeah. Other times it's just because it's comfortable. <laughs> Really? Yeah, sometimes when you're just standing there. Can you like, tell the difference? Like when you look at a comic, can you say, like, that guy's nervous, he's afraid he's going to fall down, he needs to break himself? No, but himself? it's just a thing, it's a connection to something. Like Colin will do it, but he's, he's, he's relaxing, he'll put his foot up. Sometimes it's just a comfortable way, and you don't get to do it in most shows. Most times you're on stage, you don't get to fucking press against the wall. It's just kind of like standing against the wall and talking. It's just comfortable. I think yeah. the mark of like a confident comedian is when he, he, he prowls the stage like a panther. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you don't think so? I think the prowl. mark of a confident comedian <laughs> is when he doesn't need anymore to wake up in the morning and come to a show like this. Like, that's, <laughs> you think so? That's <laughs> when you are become, you know, right. you don't need it. But right. I'm, I need it. I need you guys. You well, we need you too. I love, I, I love coming here. That's a, I, I would say 50% of, of myself tonight, today mm -hmm. is I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And 50% is we need to sell tickets for those shows. I see. I but see. I would like to get to 80% of happiness and 20% of tickets. Sure. Well, that's I, our, that's our and maybe 100% one day of just, I don't give a shit. I don't want to I'm promote. sold out. I want to just come in and hang out. That's what I want to do. Right. Yeah, for me, it's 90-10 tickets. <laughs> Whenever I do for radio. Even for here. For, for your here, own radio show. 90-10 <laughs> fucking tickets. Right, okay. Your that's, own that, show. For your own show. Your own oh, yeah. Show. yeah okay. And that's usually the range of tickets I have sold, so I'm always trying to push for more. <laughs> you know what? You could do this for everything. You could do this for everything in life. Like going to dinner with your wife or yeah. your girlfriend. And what's the percentage, like, pleasure and uh, I have to do it because, you know, I, got, I have to gain kind of mile, mileage. Right. I mean, it depends on the day, right? Like, if it's, a, if it's a day where you got to sleep in and you're well rested and you guys are getting along, you know, it might be nice to go out and get some food. Like, you might, you might have a good time. Yeah. But then there's, like, the Friday nights. You're exhausted from the week. The last thing you want to do is even talk to anybody. She wants to go out to dinner and tell you about her, you know, her But why week isn't work. she tired of the, of her week? They like to talk. Exactly. They she like lumped to... around knitting all week. <laughs> <laughs> we are very misogyne. What's that mean? Misogynist. 
Yeah, misogynistic. Oh, misogynistic. Yeah. It's you just a little phrase to protect myself from all the people that are going to say, oh, have you heard what he said right. on the American radio? <laughs> then, I, I like going out to dinner. I, I love it, but I know what you're well, saying. you have very little social interaction. I do, I, and I don't cook, so I like to go out and eat with people. I went, I went out with my ex last night, but all I'm looking at is the fucking clock, because I have to get up in the morning. I'm like, ah, oh, God damn it, I got to go home and pack. And, you know, it's a fucking, it's a whole thing. You know what I did last night? What? I took NyQuil at 9 p.m., because I, I have to force, if I, if I did, I don't do drugs, I don't drink a lot, I don't, if I did drugs, oh my God, I would be, because I had to, to force myself to stay at home. It was one night off, and I was like, no, I'm not going to the comedy club. I called my good friend Ryan Hamilton, I was going to meet him at, the, at the, the comedy cellar, and I said, no, you come to my place, and we ordered food. You know where we ordered from? Where? Mamoons. <laughs> oh, okay. That's right next to the comedy cellar. I didn't know they we kind of, <laughs> We were addicted. And then I took the NyQuil at 9.30. I don't even know what I'm telling this boring story, but... It's a great story. I had, I had falafel with Ryan Hamilton and took NyQuil. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's a series. <laughs> that's, that's season one. <laughs> that's season one because season two, I take something else. Right. With now, another comic. I, 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 I take, I take uh, a heroin with Jim Norton. That's season two already. No, yeah. season nine. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a big bump. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, season two is Tylenol PM with Robert Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, Robert Kelly, it's too, uh, you have to, to no, something more like softer. A softer, uh, uh, Rob, Robert Kelly is like kind of, you know. Severe? Not severe, but you know, that's raw. Intense, that's yeah. Intense. Yes, yes. Maybe Unpleasant. I took, no. <laughs> I took, uh, what is it? I took Tylenol with uh, Keith Albestadt. I don't yeah, know who Keith Albestadt is. Keith Albestadt's a comedian. He's yeah. a good guy, yeah. yeah. He's you know, a great comedian. Gad, I don't want to uh, worry you or put any uh, unneeded pressure, pressure yeah. on you. Yeah. But. But I want you to know that be literally before you came in, this is a new system that we have. Come on. Literally, like, minutes before you came in, this is Tiny Anthony, and he's one of our producers. Merdloaf. That's right. <laughs> what, is that? What, what is that, Merdloaf? It's shitloaf, they call him. Yeah. And he, okay. he comes up with, like, ideas for the show and things we should be doing on the show. And you don't do them. Generally not. They're not of the course. greatest ideas in the world. Uh, but his new idea that we want to we want to empower him. So we want to do his ideas. And what he said was, we should do a segment called "Rate the Guest." And rate the guest. That's yeah. right. No, yeah, like okay. And what we do is we talk to a guest and we do the segment. And then like after you leave, we all get around when you're not around anymore, and we talk. We give you a letter grade on your appearance, like on high the show. school, like you're in high school, <laughs> right? And he I've, did it for the other guests this week. Most but, guests did pretty well. Uh, yeah, but wait, what's the idea of this? I mean, I, uh, okay. I, so like, if he doesn't like you, he can just sit there. This guy that you don't know, I know. can just sit there and be like, but oh, listen, Gad, you know why like I love C. this show? I what? loved this show because there were, there was no uh, things like that. There was no such a like organized, whatever segment, like, and now this is the, <laughs> -na 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 -na, the chopsticks game. Right. Okay, yeah. No, I, it was great, you know, back in the day, this show. Mm -hmm. And now it changed so much. It's too regimented. Regiment, segment, right. the money, the sponsoring, right. and everything. Now you rate the guests, and then... We don't I, need to do this, do we? I want to rate you. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, I see more people who do... Bless you, my friend. Thank you. And God bless you. I guess. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> never done this before. <laughs> First <on> time. <laughs> Oh, what was that? Car crash. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, bonjour les amis, je suis en direct. I'm sorry, I'm talking to my um, Instagram followers. Instagram live. So people, oh, please. What do they say? Oh, wow. Oh, what yeah. do they say? Not Are we fans? big in France? No, no, she, she wants to, to know your name. My name is Sam Roberts. I'm the last professional broadcaster. Il s'appelle Sam uh, Roberts. Are you married? Yes. Yes, he's married. But she's French. She's okay with that. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. Is she into it? Yeah. Oh, I Salut gotta, les amis, je suis en direct aujourd'hui avec euh, nos amis Jim euh, Norton et Sam euh, Roberts, nouveau producteur qui a des idées euh, complètement folles et bidons qui veut absolument les faire passer. So, right. Yeah. Was that insulting what you said? Yeah, yeah. just talked about the <laughs> stupid ideas for. Yeah. What are you giving Gad so far? A plus. <laughs> oh man, you're right so there. nice. No, man, he came no, with energy. He's funny. He got, it's, it's, Do you think it's insulting that somebody like that would even have the audacity to sit there and judge your appearance whatsoever? Like, isn't that a little like? Who I think the it's fuck funny. Fuck, are you? I think it's funny. You do. 
You know what's funny these days with the, we know we've heard so many jokes about the Uber thing and rating the Uber, but the thing that they do when you, le when you leave, when you get off the car, they ask you, please, would you put five stars for me? Yeah. Like they ask you five stars. You cannot ask someone a rating. A rating is what I right. think. My honest assessment of you without your requesting it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give them five stars and a little tip. It all depends, oh, though. Oh, excuse if, me, if, money bags. I, if they uh, if they do the right thing, I t I do. If they take the directions, I use Waze. I have my own app. Um, you drive. I I drive. Yeah. <laughs> you give he give he gives them. That's funny. When Jim goes into a Uber, he's like, "I have candies. Do you want candies?" <laughs> he says, "No." Is my temperature okay? Yeah. Can and, I give uh, you? Can I have uh, a water? A water? You thirsty? Yeah. 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 I'm gonna sing that song. Music is good for you. <laughs> uh, that's what he does. You know, yeah. he's a. Uh, He's, he's hospitable, he's Jim Norton. Okay, we're going to say bye-bye. I don't want to hold this phone and doing it live. And Why don't you just put it down? I don't know. That's going to be too long for them, no? Fuck them. Okay. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> where, where should we put this? Uh, you could, yeah, yeah put it Put it facing Troy's crotch. <laughs> <laughs> where, should we, where should we put You that? could just, like. I want, I, want, I want an angle where we see everyone. You and... can rest it on the table, right, on Troy's yeah. table, pointed towards us if it's the selfie camera. You just want to point it at you because you figure yeah, you'd be we'll popular in well, France. Who's that French chick? It's not going to happen. Is that me? Bye -bye. Well, I don't know. That French chick was into me. She wasn't into you. She wanted to know what she looks like. Who cares? By the way, Instagram Live is pretty good. I've done it where you could actually just bring people in to join oh, you in chat. 7,000 people were watching. Oh, my God. That's more than listeners. More than really? you have yeah, listeners. Of course, yeah. more. Yeah. So, so do you think... Do you I think... thought it was 700. No, 7,000, man. Oh, cool. Do you not get 7,000 people watching your Instagram Lives? Not in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to know something. Yeah, now tell. people are listening where? All over America? All over Canada. the world. Really? Canada oh, yeah. and U.S. Yeah. Canada and U.S.? Mm -hmm. Yes, everywhere. Wow. Where are you promoting gigs? Uh, LA. Like, do you sell well in Montreal? I imagine you do great Very well. there. Montreal was the first city that uh, was sold out in a few days. Boom! Like in a few days, really. Uh, I'm doing Sunday Montreal, and and I do two shows at the Olympia. It's it's sold out. How big is that place? It's uh, uh, twelve hundred. Okay. I mean, Yeah. One thousand two hundred. Yeah. Two hundred. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Montreal is. A... We met in Montreal. Uh, For the when, first time, when we met, not the first time. You, uh, we met like very briefly. You went to have a brunch. Uh, oh, that's right. And this very nice hotel. You were with a beautiful girl. I didn't want to interfere. You know. No, no. I remember seeing. I her. wanted to talk to her, but you were here, so I don't blame you. You could have cock blocked me. You make more money. I would have allowed it. Yeah. Yeah. Go like, ahead, you take her. Of Although course. Jim was talking to her, it would have been a double cock block. Sure would have. Yeah. <laughs> Delightful cock young blocking. lady. Yeah, cock blocking. That's great. Man. Right, right. But <laughs> very <laughs> elegant way of saying. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Oh, she cock cock blocked. Cock blocked. I mean, it's yeah. hard to say. Yeah. Oh, Mark Mark Norman is here. Hey, he's trying to get a ride to the airport. Good. What is he doing? He's going to cock block me now. <laughs> he is going to cock block you. He uh he, he uh wanted. I didn't realize he was actually going to come. He said, I thought he was joking. He said he well, was going to come do the show for five minutes so he could get a ride to the airport because he Man. uses the car service. That's, so, is that why? Oh, yeah. Don't, don't spread that around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, Gad. How, How are you? you? you know, I, like, Gad? I like his voice. I like Mark Norman. Uh, I like his voice. <laughs> hey, hey. I like Gad. Do do woo. Well, at least no one's taking advantage of our car it's service funny whenever options. Someone, <laughs> right. Was it whenever, whenever someone tries to uh, imitate, to impersonate uh, French people, they have this the, the same thing that we've we've never heard in France. Actually, do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. they make it like an arrogant type? Of... I don't know. I remember doing this uh, Mark Marin podcast, and he wouldn't stop like for like five minutes. Oh, ba -do -ba -do -ba -da, ba -do -ba -do -ba. I said, "Come on, that's it." I, I no, they. You don't even hear. That's not even the sounds that you hear being made over there. It's like you guys, th okay, les certitudes. How you say it? certitude, certitude? Cer uh, certitude. When, servitude? Servitude? No, certitude. Fortitude? When, when you're sure about something, you have like... Positive. No, whatever. You are okay. certain. Like, okay, let, let me give you an example. Certainty. Certainty. Yes. Americans really think right. that Jerry Lewis was... His biggest uh, fans' territory was France, and he's much more popular in France, and... It's yes, he was popular, but who said that France really? We loved him, mm -hmm. but not more than the U.S. I don't understand this thing. Mm, that Why? is true. I've I, heard that my whole life. The Jerry Lewis was most popular in France. Yeah, he probably spread that rumor. Mm. I think like, people just yeah, like the rumor I spread about I'm being there. 
in France. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> when I first moved here. <laughs> right. Oh man, that was great to to invent the whole story. Yeah, you told Nobody everybody. Nobody checked. Did. No. Oh, I did arenas and stuff. <laughs> Nobody checked. I've never seen him there. No, me neither. Never. Interesting. You just told everybody, I'm really. Don't worry, I'm really famous in France. I'll be famous here. Who's gonna long. go and check? They I didn't check because Americans don't care about the other. Yeah. That's literally when when Roland first booked you on the show. He was like, Gad, he's really big in France. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, I guess we should take of him on the course. show then. Yeah, of it course. works. The king of baguette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's bring the king of baguette to our table. That's right. He's more of a forget. <laughs> 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 but uh, I like that. <laughs> if I get is a little. Is... <laughs> but but the accent thing. When I went to Australia to do the festival there, everybody made fun of Americans by going, "Oh my God, hello, look at this!" Like that was our Valley Girl voice. That was every joke. That's funny because, by the way, first of all, you've never been to Australia. We all know that. Melbourne, but, Melbourne no, no, Melbourne we know you've never been. Mark, we know that. Come on, let's not lie. It's I don't okay. like that you said Melbourne trying to sound like you were fucking raised there. That was my yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. He said Melbourne like a local. It's Melbourne. No, you know what? In France, when they want to uh, make like, uh, they don't want to imitate Americans, they do the same thing, especially like women. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they think oh, every American is like, oh, that's right. amazing. But that's kind of how American men also uh, uh, make <laughs> fun of American women. I guess really? so. Yeah. yeah. Bill Burr does that. Uh, yeah. CK, no, yeah. but the, the enthusiasm of Americans is really um, interesting in our eyes you know like oh my god this is great and well this like, place is great yeah. even if you don't know people you go hey how are you uh like even if you say i'm yeah nice to meet you hey gad what's up nice to meet you <laughs> we don't mean you? it though it's insincere yeah, it's no, 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 fake to say it's totally fake yeah. yeah or when you do a set in a club the, the guy he he hasn't even watched the set great job man okay see you later oh, great job. Great. What, what are you talking about because the honesty would be too unpleasant i didn't watch you nor do i care yeah you know, right that, that's sure. the honesty too long uh, it's not that I don't like you, but I haven't watched because I have something to do. Yeah. Blah blah blah. So we're you also... agree between you guys that okay, let's be dishonest, everyone. Yeah, we see like the last thirty seconds as we're going on. If I see the last thirty seconds of Gad because I'm after him, great job. I don't. The first fourteen and a half minutes could have been him getting booed. Bit. I know. <laughs> we're also obsessed though with people thinking that we're nice people. That's true. That's true. So like you want it, you want to be able. Okay, I'm just going to take a mental note that Gad's on stage yeah. right now, yeah. so I can say something nice look to him when he gets good. off. People want to look good. They want to look good. That's what happens with uh, celebrities everywhere. They don't want to be or do good. They want to look good. Right. I have friends. They fight for dolphins, Earth, uh, feminism, everything, but they're assholes. Right. In real life. But not that but many people. But it's good to look good on Instagram. It's very important to fight and to save all the dolphins. That's right. it. Well, because on Instagram, you're talking to whatever. 7,000 people were just watching you live. Who cares if like, if 10 people in your life know that you're an asshole, but you've tricked 100,000 into thinking exactly. you're a good person. Go for the numbers. That's yeah. what celebrity is. Right. That's Your it. Your family hates you. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but who know, cares? Michael, or no, Jeb, Alec Baldwin calls his daughter a fat pig. <laughs> right. But then he goes on the news and goes, ah, I love whales. Right. He's, and he's such a charming, fun guy. Right. You know? Except if you're his daughter. <laughs> like, yeah, he's terrifying. <laughs> we like when celebrities hate each other. There's something enjoyable because their lives are so good. Mm -hmm. You see a celebrity's life is so great. It's just kind of, That's oh, why yeah. people like watching them fall apart because it's kind of fun to watch yes. somebody with so much of a better life fall or apart. Or I would like to see an actor talking about uh, shooting a movie and he didn't like anything of this. Because it's always, oh my oh, God, yeah. when I read the script, I was like, this is the script I've been waiting for, you know, all my life. And then this director is... If there's just, I mean, one director really understood who I was. It's him, and my partner was the best. I would like to hear another story. Maybe not that it went, it went like catastrophe, but just something real, something different. Sometimes, like maybe oh, I showed up, and I, I was sure it's gonna be a, like really bad, and I don't know. Sometimes if you get the right actor and they're old enough and the movie was long enough ago, oh, yeah. you can get a real answer. Like when we had, you were here for it, John C. McGinley was in, oh, yeah. and he was talking about Sean Connery and what an awful person he was. Like that was because that was there had been enough distance. He's secure enough oh. in his career. Sean Connery's yeah. not going to hurt him at this point. Exactly. Right. Michael Madsen did the same thing. He goes over his yes. movies and he will rate which ones were shit. <laughs> I mean, he'll tell you why he did them. Yeah. Michael Madsen also thought I was a liar for saying I didn't hit my wife. He said that all guys He's right. That. Michael yeah. Madsen is very perceptive. He's a great actor and a bright man. Yeah. I got a lot of shit for that McGinley retarded joke. <laughs> was that? I thought you were just mad about Starbucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Who'd, you get, who'd you get shit from? John, or the internet. Did they? Yeah, the I mean, in, a, in a fun way. Oh, okay. You know, like, that was crazy. You're a, you're a lunatic. You know, that kind um, of stuff. How do you say, Carol, how do you say premier degré? That's hard. 
No sarcasm. Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you heard. <laughs> you heard. No, I'm more fascinated, and I know it's stupid, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. I can't handle the the no sarcasm sometimes on social media. I put oh, these yeah. days. I sometimes post stupid uh, montage of pictures just for fun, like me doing a crazy dunk, like jumping, mm. uh, and I have the Lakers jersey, whatever. And some people comment, "Oh, Photoshop." I, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, Photoshop. I'm being silly. Being just, what, who do you think you're fooling? Is, what is, <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't, you have to, that's the problem with social media is you have to add an emoji so people uh, know that, that you're being sarcastic. Well, there's no tone, there's joking. no vocal tone in social media, like in text. Like, Gad, if you right. did like, uh, consider next time you put the Photoshop up, but in the in the description, you put a little smiley face with the tongue sticking out so people are like, ah, oh, he's that. being wet. Or a wink. <laughs> or a wink. Yeah. yeah I don't I'm just do. kidding, guys. I'm just kidding, yeah. I do that when I'm talking to a girl through text, a little wink. I'll make you come, wink. She knows you won't. <laughs> exactly. It's a lie. <laughs> ah, it's sarcasm. Uh, he was exaggerating. He, <laughs> he was didn't just mean it. being silly. Yeah, he's goofing around, that's all. But yeah, sarcasm does not translate in no. text. Yeah. They don't get irony or subtlety. No, it really is, but we're still moving more towards texting to communicate than talking. I love it. You Mark, did right. you perform last night? Yes, sir. Where? Uh, upstate. Where? Two shows. I did a show in Pleasantville <laughs> for about 40 people. Then I did a, sh a bar show in Yorktown for about 20 people. Well, you were How around. were they? The first show was amazing. So you were in the best Chester. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, were they it Mark uh, headline shows or were they just kind of spots? I was headlined the first one. And it was just like a show a guy put on. He's like, I'll, f I'll fill the room. It's at Lucy's Laugh Lounge. And then the other one was somebody's like, I see you're like 50 minutes away. He tweeted at me, come do my show. It's at a bar. And I said, oh, sure. So yeah, you did it. That. Yeah. Was yeah. it good? No, that was rough. <laughs> that was yeah. really bad. Did you bomb? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Like, I did. Uh, the, if, I, if I had known that Mark Norman was bombing in Westchester, oh. I would have been there. Oh. I would have loved to have wow. seen it. Do you like the special guest intro? I Hate fucking. It. Ladies it. and gentlemen, oh. this guy, sometimes we get drop ins and they're like, ooh, yeah. Jerry. I hate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate that especially can you imagine with me it's like I feel I did two shows no two gigs like sets in Brooklyn for the first time one was uh, at the uh, Eastville you know oh, yes. yeah. great the other one was great but for it was really really interesting it was in the work uh, how you say a co-working place you know mm. uh, in the day it's like co-working working it's like, co -work, an like an office work hide, yeah and it was great, the, the crowd, but it was so weird because there was the window and you could see through the window, oh, like yeah. the comedian, like you're facing the crowd right? and then your back is in the window. That's not good. With the, no. So I couldn't, distracting. I couldn't do my set without talking about it. Of course. So I started just talking about how I feel tonight, like a prostitute in the red light district in Amsterdam <laughs> and I have to do stuff so people so people can get in what they do over there you know they show now i said to the crowd please show you're laughing so people can, <laughs> can so show something like right. so so yeah. we can, it can appeal and i did a whole thing about it but it was really weird i don't yeah. know if you ever performed. did it work yeah this this bit this thing about the situation worked really well but m the material not as good as i thought because ah uh, uh, you know, I was distracted by the, you know, the the, the place. So but the show was great, and the people were really amazing there. Could the audience see the comics that weren't on stage yeah. behind the comics that were on stage? Yeah. Like, with, so wasn't oh, that terrible. like the guy performing? Like, if somebody's a fan of yours and there's some guy performing, aren't they going to be looking behind the guy performing to be like, oh, what's Gad doing back there? Like that seems really distracting yeah. for everyone. Last thing I want while I'm, I'm on stage is yeah. people looking at five bored comedians behind me. Uh. Nobody wants to wait for the guy to get through on stage. <laughs> so we're just going to sit there and sulk. Right. You know what's funny? There's a club in Paris, and they have a green room for comedians, and I don't like it. I'm like, we're not supposed to stay in a room all together before going on stage. What's the point? You know, Camaraderie. Like, we tried to uh, uh, give no, joke ideas. No, I like to, to see <laughs> if I want to talk to you, and I see you in a club, I'll talk to you. But I don't, I don't, I don't need to be like a sitting with all everyone and waiting. That's not what the audience wants to believe. The audience wants to believe that that green room is hilarious. The laughs that are happening in that green If yeah. you thought I know, what was on the stage was funny. they want to believe that I wanted to come this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what they want to believe? They want to believe to, that, you know, we're good guys, married guys. 
Eh, right. No. I don't want my comics being good guys. I like the deviant. You like flaws. Yeah. yeah. I like a tell. I like that he's sitting in a room jerking off and drunk and whatever. But you're you know? a comic, though. You're not a typical yeah, audience I, member. I, oh, you're talking about the audience. I'm sorry. They want to believe. Yeah, most of the audience <laughs> want to believe. Like, I think a lot of the audience, even like Jim's audience, wants to believe that, you know. No, they want to believe he's face I'm deep sure that's in a, just a bull. Yeah. A lot yeah. of that's just an act, I think. I think a lot they of that's They just don't know. None of it's an act, by the way. It's yeah, all not, true. Not one bit. And they know that. I I've actually, I've actually see, understated. Like, <laughs> some of his fans, even if you do the kind of a prank, like Jim would be at in Central Park mm -hmm. with the, we'd hire actors and a woman, <laughs> like a wife, three kids, the stroller, and he plays with the kids, and uh, uh, and people come to him and hello, and he's like, no, I'm sorry, it's family time now. Yeah, I'm with and, my uh, family. I don't, I don't interact. interact with, with, yeah. I, I, yeah. I would love to to see that. <laughs> Just but as it, a social experience. It makes one of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see me with three kids. I know. You yeah. look at the strollers as a big black dildo. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> my little baby. <laughs> oh, look, he spit up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no, that was me. That's the video. That's the little uh, video. Yeah, that's there good. That's go. it. That's yeah. the payoff. That's the, uh, right. yeah. Cheerity. Let's do it. You're For, not a you're not a family man, Gad. That's not in you. I am, but yeah. son. Yeah, I, I have two sons, two. but uh, no, I don't. Whenever I see a family, mm -hmm. I'm not uh, envious. No, no. I love. I'm very fam. I love seeing my sons and being together. Do they live here or, or, or friends. Or friends, but um, my friends don't understand. Sometimes I see I see a couple with the babies and then they walk together. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my. God. I don't want to be like them, and Same. they're like, "Why?" I don't know why. Maybe this is mean what I say. No, but no, you're allowed to have your opinion. I fly every weekend, and it's just babies on a plane, and the the mom, poor mom is shh. I'm so sorry, everybody. That's brutal. I never want to do that. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. You think after you have a kid, you're gonna change your opinion of other people's kids might change. No, it doesn't even sort of. Like, I always like, I like to see a kid on a plane. I'll look and go, and then there's our future. You know, you like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I but do. the real problem of what he said just now. Which the one of you is going to get impregnated? It's impossible. The real problem is that you fly, you fly commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that's, man, that's your real that's problem. True. I'm sorry, you know? It sucks, and I'm in coach, baby. Uh, I don't understand why. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so all, I'm probably gold. a financial. Yeah, that might yeah, probably that a might financial be thing. I was, yeah, uh, yes. I was teasing. Uh, <laughs> I was teasing a little bit this uh, comedian yes. Chris Delia these days because he sold Chris. out. Uh, he sold out. Uh, he was on my show that I we shot in in LA for Netflix for the series. Uh -huh. He did one episode very funny about him doing dick jokes and me don't understand i just come from france and he has to explain to me the whole structure of the joke with the dick joke it was very funny uh, so we met and then whenever i see him like he sold out carnegie hall he did sold out carnegie hall last all week women too so oh, wait yeah. wait shows. and then he goes wait in line for hours take his shoes off flies coach commercial i said fuck like now i talk like him fuck what fuck <laughs> only fuck fucking fucking what are you? get him on a private jet what what is wrong you made money yeah. That's a lot of money. But you though. blow your whole profit margin. How yeah. much does a private jet cost, Gad? 50 I grand, No. Right? What? 30. What? Cross country? 30 grand. One where? Way? From where? From LA. Oh, that's, I don't do that. That's too far. That's too much, too, too much. How far do you fly on a private jet? Sorry? How far would you fly on a private jet? Uh, two hours. And how oh. much is that going to cost, more or less? I'm not going to tell you. Come on. I got to know because no, I got to no, know no. how far 20, away I am. 20,000. No, because this is a program we do with the charity and uh... <laughs> <laughs> You think like 20, it's like five figures? I'm not doing that. What is five figures? But Boston and New York could be, uh... Oh, you just... 12,000. Oh, that's not bad. New York to Chicago. 23,000 to fly to Chicago? That's bad. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. That's I'm... not bad. I'd rather go to fucking pilot school and fucking work for the airline. You could drive to Boston. Can I tell you something? Uh, okay, I know about planes, okay? I love planes. 62 grand. Look, LA, New York City. Hawker 800. You can't do it. Do it straight with this plane. We got to refuel. Jim doesn't never does it straight. No, he does not. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a hawker. Ooh, wait. You so see? it's gonna cost. 30 I can get now puns in in in, in English. There it's gonna go. cost thirty five grand to fly to Miami. You can fly to Miami for like two hundred fifty bucks. I know it's great. I love I love. Uh, and you can commercial. meet Chris Chris D'Elia on the plane. Yeah. that's what you get. Yeah, you know what you, you can go, but commercial. 
but you're starting to do a little better, you get economy plus. I little like leg, little leg room. Little leg room. Get yeah. on the plane first. Get yeah. that overhead. Maybe a snack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm little all about economy plus. Well, you get paid a little more. Pay more for first. That's I'm a sitting lot, with a bunch of losers. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> I'm fucking big in France. I fly private. Je vous emmerde. What does that mean? It's an elegant shit. way of saying fuck you. That I never say that. Je right. vous emmerde. Oh, you yeah. got it, man. That's good. Got it. That's good. But you're still, you're still with me in Economy Plus. You got that right. I mean, I like it. Hey, I'm, I'm gold. <laughs> I think it. Uh, yeah. Oh, what about this picture? What, what? I saw this picture everywhere. What picture Jerry's is on it? a scooter. <laughs> no, Jerry's on a scooter with. Uh, no, what is that? It's a, was that a picture of Jerry Seinfeld on a scooter? Yeah. I uh -huh. thought he likes cars. I love the professionalism he just repeated because we are so on the, the radio audience, yes. and that's you know so the I'm audience doing. knows. You are great. Thank we you all very know who Jerry is. Amazing. <laughs> thank you. I'm such a big fan. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, thank you. Oh my God. You know, God. I love my fans. So oh. it really is great. You look like you're a family man and we love it. I am. Oh my I God. I am. I'm just a nice guy. When is with your my birthday? <laughs> that's a good yes. Mark. What <laughs> sign are you? What's your star sign? What's your star sign? Oh. <laughs> okay, nobody's gonna answer about Jerry's on a scooter. Well, what's you, the you, question? Could just, you could just text him and ask him. <laughs> no, you know Jerry. We, we you know, know Jerry, Jerry better than like any that. of us. Yeah, yeah. What's he doing there? Comedians in cars? No, it's a scooter. Comedians on scooter. Yeah, we, yeah it's like getting... a scooter. He's getting around. He's zipping around. That's what I would do if I was Jerry. You think he looks silly? No, I don't know. I I want to know why he's on a scooter. Anyway. Call and ask him. So the caption will tell you. <laughs> yeah. You're it, is, paper. it is a newspaper, right? They'll probably <laughs> yeah. report on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't see any wink, so maybe it's uh, not funny. He won't That's get right. you off. Right. He uh, he was a big proponent of no marriage and no kids for years, and then he Jerry just flipped was. flipped one day. Yeah, really. And now yeah. he's like, I can't. he's just the man, the family man. I it's... know, but he would always say, I would never get married. You know, he was the 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 man child. That was his whole thing. The big boy, you know, sneakers and. Funny ties and whatever. Yeah, but sometimes you meet somebody that you actually like. You know what I mean? Like, I think people who Yo, are... Oh, have you met his wife? She's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> She's Pe a scary lady. People who are like, you know, I'll never get married are like guys who have lifestyles that, you know, are a certain way. So, yeah. And they enjoy them. Killing it. Billionaire. Doing good. Yeah. Banging but also, uh, young ladies in the park. Right. But don't like any of these people, right? right. Sometimes you just meet a person. You're like, I could hang out with that person. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You meet someone you just want to spend time with. After a while, you're like, all right, what am I yeah. going to do? But hey, also, you're 52. We yeah, got, when you get yeah. older, it doesn't matter. I'm 50. I look at things differently than I used to. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like nah, who cares if I fuck this one?